There's been a major shift with Magic the Gathering players in recent times where they're switching from buying traditional Magic products into using proxies instead. Today, we're going to explore why that's happening and take a look at some of the newest proxies that are available. This is the intro for the Hatcher Show. He didn't want to do nothing, so we stand in there. Hello, my friends. We're here today to talk about why people have decided that proxying magic cards is the way to go. And the people at mtgproxy.com have sent me some special proxy booster packs that we're going to take a look at so you can see what the state of current proxies is like. But before we do that, I want to talk about why this massive change is happening. And I actually have one of the reasons right here in my hand. So some of you may remember, let's be real, all of you remember, Magic 30, where Wizards of the Coast decided they were going to say, hey, pay us $1,000 for four booster packs of not real Magic cards, gold-backed, essentially, proxy cards where they wanted to have their cake and eat it too and go look these aren't real magic cards it doesn't count like we're violating the reserve list but they are real magic cards and you can totally play with them wink wink so they upped the number of dual lands and soul rings that were available inside the product which was totally just meant to be a collector's product that's what they said but ultimately what they wanted to do was rob us blind and so up until that point proxies had made some headway with people depending on the scenario but once these magic 30 cards hit the market people started to go okay maybe i don't need to be picking up the real thing anymore. So we've reached the point now where it's about a year or more later than the Magic 30 debacle. A ton of people have left the game in terms of specifically owning real Magic cards. A lot of old school players sold off their entire collection and replaced them with proxies. Now for me, I've never been against other people using proxies, but I always wanted to have regular real magic cards right up until magic 30 shook me of that notion and reminded me of when i was a kid and i used to just scribble things down on whatever to be a game piece for whatever game there is literally nothing wrong with using proxies as long as they're not counterfeits and by that i mean a counterfeit card is indistinguishable from a regular magic card. They can be sold as such and people do that in a scummy fashion. Proxies have some identifier that make it very clear they are not magic cards. So in the case of what we're gonna look at today, the back of the card is very obviously not a magic card. So we're gonna take a look at the quality level of the proxies that are currently available in these MTG proxy boosters so you can get an idea of what people are dealing with and see if this is something that'll work for you. All right, so before we open the proxy packs, I just wanna give you a comparison of a real printing and one of these proxy printings of an old school card from Legends. So one of these Hellfires came from a proxy pack and one of these Hellfires is actually directly from a Legends booster pack that I have cracked myself. When you look at it on the screen, I bet you're probably having a very difficult time determining which is which. And that is a testament to how usable these proxies are. Now I'm gonna flip them over so that you can tell which is which. They go like this, bam, right? But when you look at the surface of them, guess what? They look pretty much the same. And these proxies that they make are actually printed to a better standard than Magic 30 was, which blows my mind. Wizards want you to pay $1,000 thousand dollars for four garbage printed boosters these boosters are like 10 bucks each take a look you get 16 cards per pack i don't know the exact numbers they're using for this but the estimated retail worth of the cards that would be in here you can get like a grand's worth of cards up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of cards is what it's saying but obviously that's based on a number of market factors and the proxies in here aren't worth any money themselves. It's just an example of, yo, do you want to try doing some crazy draft or start to build a cube? This could be a good way to do it. So let's take a look at the cards inside these packs, all right? 
This is the first one we're cracking here. And now these proxies have a different back than the one that I showed you because that Hellfire was one that I actually brought in myself. This is what the back of these look like. And you can see, proxy playtest copy, not for sale. So while it does mimic a magic back, anybody looking at this will immediately be able to tell this is not a genuine magic card. And that's the difference between a counterfeit and a proxy. If this looked like a regular magic back, these would be counterfeits. And that is not something that's okay. Passing fake magic cards off as real magic cards isn't okay with me. But playing with non-official magic cards, the only place you have to play with official magic cards is in sanctioned magic events. So if you're not doing that, wow, they got the Doctor Who stuff in here already, eh? Okay. So you can, I guess, yeah, I guess it makes sense. They're gonna have everything out like right away. So you're going to see a whole range of stuff. We got Deserted Beach. We got a Stoneforge Mystic. That's some pretty cool artwork. They've done so many Stoneforges that I don't even recognize them all. All right. Then we've got Old School Lightning Bolt Action. Look at that. Now, this is pretty dark. If you saw this, this isn't a one-to-one -one along the alpha or beta vibes, right? So you would be able to tell the difference in person, but oh, oh, oh bro, black bordered plateau with the old school artwork. This artwork was changed in revised. So revised, which has the most plateaus of all the printings, doesn't actually have this artwork. I love the nostalgic multicolored text box swirl, like it's two snakes fighting each other. You ever play that computer game where you try and drive each other's snakes into the wall that's sweet man and look at this totally usable totally usable look at that look at how nice it looks these are solid jeweled lo <laughs> jeweled lotus man <laughs> wizards makes you chase this hey why don't you pay us hundreds and hundreds of dollars for boosters trying to get one of these and it's like oh wow look a cardboard rectangle that plays exactly the same as the real deal that looks great wow that's awesome Tangle Wire, oh, that's solid and a really obnoxious card. Then you got Seasoned Pyromancer with the Flame Tigers, yeah. After that, Beastmaster's Ascension. Wish Claw Talisman, see, it doesn't all have to be super hotness. You can get whatever you want, right? Uh, Cornered Market, it's a weird choice. Uh, Peach Garden Oath, oh, yeah, <laughs> a Volcanic and a Mox Pearl. Imagine drafting with this, bro. How much fun would that be? These look nice, man. That's great. Then you got Vorinclex coming on through. Yeah. Triomes. Emeria, bro. This is like, for real. When they talk about being expensive packs, the dual lands, like, and I'm just going to use really, really low numbers, but there's you couldn't even get these things for like 500 bucks a piece for the real deal, right? And, and one of these moxes, they're going to run you thousands. So I played with these back in the day. I had the real ones. And admittedly, when you know they're not real, it doesn't trigger the exact same feeling. But let me tell you, close enough, bro. Close enough. I actually have a full set of proxy moxes that are going into my cube because, I mean, why not? Why not? That's just one pack, man. That's just one pack. Let's see what other insanity there is in here. And this stuff is printed to a better quality than Wizards is printing their cards. Like, for real, the new Karlov Manor cards are all gritty and whatever. Oh, this one actually has a little bit of damage up in the corner. So they're not perfect, right? And I'm not trying to pretend they are. But the incidence of quality problems is much lower with these than Wizards of the Coast stuff. So, man... It's so nutty. It's so nutty to pull cards out of current booster packs that Wizards wants the most money for, and the cards are gritty garbage. It's incredibly frustrating. I have to admit, these packs are sturdy, but it makes them a little bit challenging to open comparatively. All right. Then we've got, oh, anime artistic study. Look at that beautiful mermaid, man. See, and this is another thing too. Wizards are the greediest people on earth. Ristic Study was originally a common. The only reason they made it a mythic is because so many people wanted it that the value went up on the secondary market. This card can easily be a common, but it's not because Wizards wants to hose you. And that is all the more reason to just say, yeah, you know, I think I'm okay with not having the real thing. Dark Steel Colossus, an 11-11 Trample Indestructible. I can't believe how much power creep has moved along in Magic to the point where this guy ain't even a big deal anymore. You're just looking at him and go, is that all you got, bro? Crazy. 
Academy Manufactor. If you create a clue food or treasure token and create one of each, this guy's nuts. You got your pathways. Oh man, the old school Shivan. Look at that. Oh, and another dual hand. Here's a Taiga. Three duels already. Cyclonic Rift. This is nuts, bro. Hey, Time Elemental from Legends. I love this guy. I used to rock him with Stasis, man. Answer is weirding. It was a real jerk move. Uh, Delighted Halfling. Well, I, I thought she was holding a roll of toilet paper. Not going to lie. All right. Overgrown Tomb. You want some Shockland action? Not too shabby. Morin Fen. Just random, random old garbage. Look at this. Five mana, five, four flyer. To the upkeep, you have to pay a life, then two life, then three life. Like, <laughs> man, back in the day, creatures had such huge drawbacks. W weird. Huh. I never would have expected them to make a gold bordered version of this, but I guess it's just to illustrate that you can have anything. And I mean, since they're proxies, who cares? Time walk, baby! You know, the original wording on this card says um, target player loses next turn or whatever. And so people thought that that meant, like, you lose the game next turn. For a blue and one, you just auto-lose, not I get another turn. Pretty wild. Psychic Venom, an obnoxious old school card. Look at the eyeballs. I always forget about the eyeballs and just see the snake. Zodiac Taga, Phyrexian Tower. So, yeah, you can see there are a ton, a ton of random powerhouse cards in here. So if you want to draft or build the cube, it's an excellent way to start. Or you can just order proxies individually, right? Like, I have I have been brought over to the proxy side of things for sure. I still do love real magic cards. I haven't reached the point where I don't want to have real magic cards and just want to have proxies. But before, like I said, I had no interest in proxies. And now I totally do. Hey, Temporal Extortion! I just cracked one of these recently out of an actual Planar Chaos pack. And I have to say... I like having proxy versions. There's a reason I have that proxy Hellfire. And speaking of which, I should put that Hellfire back in its sleeve so it doesn't take any damage. It is old and rare. Um, yeah, the reason that I have like stuff like this is so that if I ever want to take my cube on the road and I don't want the big expensive cards to be coming with me, I can just slot proxies in to pr and put these guys in a binder so that when I come home, I can swap them back out. And that way, take my cube on the road. If somebody swipes it, they're just getting a bunch of proxies and I'm not losing my real cards. So I can use this as a proxy for my temporal extortion. That's a sweet score. Black Market, solid card. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, there you go. Another Dooland Unlimited Savannah. Man. Like, bro, you can't... Honestly, part of the reality is you can't find old cards of this nature with this crisp, clean of order. They're almost all beat up and crappy. It's hard to find old school magic cards in good condition. And this looks great. Control Magic. Check out the old school wording where it says, uh, oh, no, wait, does it? No, this is the fourth edition one. The revised version would actually tell you you have to give the creature back to your opponent at the end of the game. <laughs> Imperial Recruiter. These are the cards that Wizards would reprint and just make exceptionally hard to get for no reason other than they want to try and extract as much money as possible from us, not for gameplay reasons. But guess what? Proxies represent the winds of change! All right, we got Goblin Welder. Oh, I love this guy. He's so goofy. Food Chain! I made a stupid, weird combo with Genesis Chamber and Shrieking Drake using this. That was a lot of fun. It's gross. The artwork for this is gross. Drowned Catacomb. Mm, eh, whoop de doo Soul Warden. Always solid. What else do we got here? Black Knight from the old school days. Battle doesn't need a purpose. The battle is its own purpose. You don't ask why a plague spreads or a field burns. Don't ask why I fight. This is something new magic is missing because they cram so much power onto the cards, there's no room for flavor anymore. Oh, bro. Beta underground and a polluted delta to search for it. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> That's awesome. I know they're not real cards, right? But at the same time, they light up the brain in a pretty enjoyable way. I'm vibing on this. Next pack, let's keep it going. I wasn't sure originally if I was going to crack all the packs, but at this point, I just want to see it all. I'm having fun opening these. This is actually more satisfying than opening those recent Karlov Manor boosters were. Oh, they did different artwork for Deflecting Swat. Look at that. 
that, man? Dragon just going, nah, son. Nah. Get that out of here. Come here to slay the dragon for the good of the kingdom. How terribly predictable. <laughs> Chivalric Alliance. I've never seen this card. One white and one enchantment. Whenever you talk with two or more creatures, draw a card. Two, discard a card. Make a 2-2 two, two knight. Huh. That's not too bad. I dub thee Sir Hellraker for now. Huh. Oh, the old school secret layer. Uh, well, I guess old school compared to secret layers, but not regular magic. Look at that. Pixelated. Bad Moon? Back when they used to make cards that affected everybody. So if your opponent's playing black, they'd get the bonus too. Bro. First turn, Dark Ritual, Black Knight, Unholy Strength. Second turn, Bad Moon, Swing for five. Get some! Oh, scrub a lub dub Man, I, I played with these cards back in the day. This is so cool. Ew, gross. Pure Lace. The laces suck, man. These were rare, bro. One mana for an interrupt that changes the color of a card in play or a spell on the stack. This sucks. Oh, Doctor Who. Doctor Who cares, am I right? All right, Anointed Procession, really solid card. Heroic Intervention, really solid card. Ice Cauldron, this card confuses people. It's funky. It basically lets you put cards on layaway. You can pay some mana in advance and cast them later on using that mana. Call to the grave, zombie action. Oh, bro, I actually have, I actually have right here, I believe. I have an Alpha Fireball, don't I? Or is that in my cube? Never mind. It's already inside my cube, so I can use this as a proxy for it. This is dope, man. Island Sanctuary! I love this card. It's so wonky. The One Ring! Forget paying 80 bucks for it, son! See, this is emblematic of how Wizards is treating magic, too. Oh, you play Modern? Well, guess what? Modern's not a non-rotating format anymore. We're forcing rotation into it, and you have to chase down these cards. Brutal. Gold Border Necropotence. This card was such a house back in the day. So strong. I mean, it's still strong. Let's be real. And then a Dranith Magistrate. Whoop, whoop. Who cares? Let's see what's in the final pack, bro. But imagine drafting with this stuff. For real. And at this price point, Wizards wants more than this. We're getting to the point where they want to sell us five-card booster packs of poorly printed cards that they barely spent any time. Oh, we took this artwork and painted a cowboy hat onto it. We want you to buy an aftermath set that has five cards per pack at a preposterous price point. It's ridiculous. Hey, look, this is one of the cards they put in the new set Thunder Junction as a special guest. And here it is just included. <laughs> Jump. Look at that, man. One blue instant. Tar creature gets flying until end of turn. Awful. Awful. Doesn't even feel like a magic spell, but buddy's leaping up on a castle wall. Pretty cool. Feral Shadow. Oh, original portal. All right. And, oh, bro, two of those plateaus. Cool. Reconstruction. If Biff a free. Yeah, man. Two green and two. It's hard to see the two. Three, three, because Arabian Nights had weird mana symbol issues. So this is a three, three flyer. Anybody can pay a green mana to do one damage to all flyers and all players. And you can do that over and over. So if your opponent was playing green, he could blow this guy out of the air. But Wizards messed up and actually put this artwork on the Serendipifreet in Revised as well, which was very confusing. Godless Shrine. Not too shabby. Sylvan Tutor from Portal. That artwork's dope. This is a really cool card. Delay. The French, the French name for this is hilarious. Saruman the White Hand. Ew. Gross. This Lord of the Rings treatment is crap. I don't think Wizards sold much of the second iteration of Lord of the Rings stuff. This does not look good. This is not a good style. Erborg, Tomb of Yogmoth. Solid. Turn all your lands into swamps. Hey, there's a control magic that does have the old wording. So, it says, um, you control the target creature until enchantment is discarded or game ends. Right? So you control it, but at the game end, you got to give it back. I love that. Mox Emerald Sun. Yeah, yeah, double Moxes. Fat Modi. Fat Modi. Fat Modi. I loved this guy. Six mana for a 5-6 flyer now isn't even good enough to be a regular uncommon in a pack. But back in the day, this guy was a house. He was your answer to Shiv and Dragons and all that other nonsense. And your end game beater. Clone him, Vesuvian doppelganger, and then elbow drop from the top ring. From the top, baby. 
Then we got Dosen the Falling Leaf and a Call Me Hydra. Look at that casting cost. Look at all them green mana symbols. You like devotion to green? I got your devotion to green. Eight green. I think this is the only card in Magic that has this level of a specific monocolored casting cost. I don't think there's anything else that costs eight of one mana color. So, it costs one green less to cast for each green creature you control, though. So you get to cheese it out, and it's trample. This is a lot of fun. In ages past, bargains were struck and promises were made. Now, we must collect on our debt. Begin the hymns and the druids. Start this chant, and then this hydra just apparates. What's up? Like, bro, that is epic. So, that's been a walkthrough of these proxies. I wanted to let you guys know what they look like. Big thank you to mtgproxy.com for sending me these booster packs to take a look at. And this isn't the only stuff they have, guys. They sent out a pack of sleeves if you need sleeves. They sent me blank dry erase reusable tokens. And even if I want to, like, let's say I want to make these look more official, they even sent me out some little foily stamps that I could add to the bottom of cards to make them feel like the real deal. So if you want to... Instead of having this, you actually wanted it to look all shiny. You can even do that. But remember, you don't have to worry because the backs aren't real magic cards. So you don't have to worry that someone will somewhere think that they're real magic cards, right? So as far as I'm concerned, proxies are a legitimate way to engage with Magic the Gathering. Wizards of the Coast has become completely disrespectful of its customer base. So you make your own decisions. Thanks for coming by, my friends. See you next time.